Welcome to Silverstone, where we are ready for round three of this year's Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. The cars will be shortly making their way onto the grid, and then we look forward to the first of these two 50-minute races this weekend. The entry continues to grow in the championship. Uh, we have another excellent entry this weekend. One or two new drivers joining the series for the first time, and with a race that has mandatory pit stops there is much to look forward to the cars then on the grid and the race of course will run from a rolling start so very shortly everybody will make their way into position and the drivers who are set for a race with a mandatory pit stop whether you are doing it on your own or with a co-driver uh, they will get set for what's going to be another fascinating race because if you cast your mind back to Monza, where we had the first races of the season, there was drama right the way through the race and, of course, through the classes, because it's not just about what goes on at the very head of the field. There is this year the Pro, the Pro-Am and the Am categories to look for. Pole position for this race, uh, claimed by car number 11. Now, qualifying didn't really happen as such. Uh, the cars were released when the rain was at its heaviest this morning. We've had a lot of rain this morning at Silverstone. And eventually, when the cars did go out it was rather more akin to power boating so they paddled around as best they could but very early on people made contact heavily with the barriers and Roberto Deliguanti was one such driver who did some damage to his car but did more damage to the barriers when that was repaired the officials gave the drivers the option of whether or not they wanted to go and uh, restart qualifying and they all said no you must be mad we'd much rather stay here thank you in our hospitality unit so uh, a consequence of that was that uh, on safety grounds qualifying was not restarted and the grid has been taken as uh, the best of the two free practice sessions so pole in quotes goes to the auto carrozzeria imperiale entry of roberta tanker and andrea amici who will be the start driver and alongside on the front of the grid it is going to be one of the two Bonaldi motorsport cars which Milos Pavlovich will start and Eduardo Piscopo will take over for the second stint. The second row is a bit easier because you've got Andrea Palma and Alberto Viberti who are soloists as you can see car number 70 heading up towards the grid that's Shota Alcacerava and then number 90 Alberto Di Falco but the two soloists are on the second row of the grid. The third row is where you find a newcomer to the championship, Giovanni Venturini, who's raced in things like Formula Renault 3.5 and he's raced in GP3 and Formula Renault 2 litre. So he's going to be one to watch, I think, making his debut was there. Taras Polishuk, who brought down the barriers last year on this part of the circuit. In fact, Polishuk caused the big stoppage. Uh, he's slowly making his way round to the grid. But uh, Venturini, I think, is going to be one to watch. And then on the outside of the third row, it is Gerhard Ferraza, who will start in the GRT Grasser Racing Team car. And we know that he is quick. The fourth row, uh, Jeroen Mull, starts on the inside as the cars come, in some cases, into the pit lane to get another installation lap in. 34 there is that of El Pato, the pseudonymed Italian, and Andres Josefsson, the Swede. So as some come to the grid, others go for the pit lane. And as long as they've... Uh, still got time to come through the pit lane and get back onto the grid then that's all fine they don't have to worry about getting trapped there as long as the pit lane lights are on green as long as that pit lane is still open the Lamborghini pace car at the front of the queue it is a rolling start of course for these races and Andrea Amici is the man on pole position last year's champion and the former Formula Renault racer former uh, Seat champion, very experienced, even though he's only, what, 22 years of age now. And Andrea Amici with Roberto Tanka, who's not as quick as we saw at Monza, but is an experienced Lamborghini driver. Uh, those are the two at the front of the grid. So as the field, in some cases, slots into place, in other cases, he goes through the pit lane. But the one at the back is going to be interesting, Matteo Zucchi, who didn't do very many laps yesterday, so Matteo Zucchi who again is a quick driver, experienced driver, former Italian touring car racer, Italian GT racer. He'll be trying to make some progress up from the rear of the field. One to watch. And the rest of the field slotting into place now. It's a 50-minute race. The pit window uh, comes between 20 and 30 minutes, and 80 seconds is the pit stop time. It's 20 seconds drive time, if you like, 
pit in to pit out. Uh, but then 60 seconds is the mandatory stop element, so you add it all together, and 80 seconds is a pit stop. And the drivers working their way to the grid there is 47, Alberto Viverti, one of the soloists. And a rather droopy flag covers the British Racing Drivers Club's badge atop the clubhouse that overlooks the stadium. Looking down on Brooklands from one angle and Woodcut Corner from the other. And then because we use the what you might call old pits and start line, the national pits and start area, that's Woodcut Corner, the last corner on the lap rather than being halfway around as it is for the Grand Prix at Silverstone these days. The field starting now to take place. David Addison and Jack Nichols here at Silverstone. Jack will be down on the grid and we'll try to grab a word with one or two of the drivers if we can pre-race. But it is on pole position. Andrea Ramici, Milos Pavlovic lines up with him at the front of the grid. And Andrea Palma, who will start third, won the first race at Monza. Race two, Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovic were the winners. So. We've had a decent spread in the uh, pro category, same as the overall. In pro-am, Mirko Bortolotti and Aristoteles Barbarousis won the first and second races. Well, there's no Mirko Bortolotti here this weekend. He's got a clashing engagement, so Bortolotti is absent. And it is the Ecuadorian driver, uh, Sebastian Merchant, who takes over that car. And he's an experienced driver in national events. So uh, Sebastian Merchant who's been a uh, Formula Renault driver, he's been a rally driver, he's taken part in the uh, six hours of Bogota, the endurance race, and he's won that. Uh, he knows his way around a car, so he's one to watch, I think, once we get underway. And we are not far away now from getting the race underway. Now let's go down to the grid, try and catch up with one or two drivers pre-race, and also with Jack Nichols. A good qualifying for you but it's going to be behind the safety car at the start i know i know and it's maybe a little bit not fair i think because uh, the condition of the track now it's very very good and i think uh, a normal uh, start uh, procedure could be fine but it's okay because we have a good setup also because we didn't do the qualifying session because of the weather but we did uh, both the uh, free practice, uh, we were very fast, and that's why now we are in pole position. So we are very confident uh, uh, with the car, and I'm very confident uh, of Andrea, which is a uh, very talent. So uh, I hope he will do a very fast stint, and then I'll, I'll jump in and try to maintain the position. That's our strategy. How much driving have you been able to do this weekend in the dry? Have you had enough time? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's just my third uh, race in Silverstone, so I know more or less the, the track, and also I race in the under the rain and under the uh, sun. So I'm I'm fine with the with the track. It's just the fact of being fast, and that's all. Excellent. Try to be f as faster as you can, and that's all. Brilliant. Best of luck. Back to Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Bye. So the countdown continues here at Silverstone. Good to hear from the drivers, the atmosphere down on the grid. Still offline at Silverstone, a little bit damp, although far, far better conditions than we had early on in the day. And Lamborghinis around here always deliver good racing. It's one of the things you can rely on about the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. The racing is fierce. And this year, with the emphasis on the classes, it has been very good indeed. Although the man that was rather dominant in race one and race two at Monza, Simone Pellegrinelli, the former bike racer, who really was untouchable, and uh, he will be another driver to look for, the Italian who's also raced in One Make Saloon, so the uh, Italian Seat Ibiza Championship, but uh, he went very, very well at Monza, a circuit he knows well, granted, uh, and got up with the leading cars. Now, Eduardo Piscopo is down on the grid, and he will go second in the car that starts second. He's with Jack. frustrating that you'll be starting behind the safety car it is definitely and it was a pity that we couldn't run qualifying because it was a good occasion to drive some miles into this car at the end we're only at our second race but still could have been worse i mean first uh, row is what we aim for and let's see what happens in the race we know we are fast so i'm quite confident and you had a you and milos had a, a good weekend in monza but are you, are you hoping for, for better this weekend uh i, I mean we think that uh, we always need to we just aim for a championship, but then we have to be strategic and uh, see what happens in the race. Brilliant. Best of luck. Thank you. Bye. Now, looking down onto the front of the grid, 
Eduardo Piscopo's car is there, run by Bernardi Motorsport, one of the top teams. Eduardo himself came out of single-seater racing, drove in Formula 3, but was the GT4 front-runner with the Mansell brothers in the very first year of the Block Pan Endurance Series when it had a GT4 uh, class. And since then, Edo Piscopo has raced in the Carrera Capitalia and now in Lamborghinis. He's had a spell as a single-seater driver, but perhaps now thinking more that as a career, he would do well to be in GT racing. And this is an increasingly important category uh, for career GT drivers. The pro class this year caters for what you might call late 20s, early 30s career racing drivers, not the likes of, say, a Peter Cox as a former champion who has done so many miles in a Lamborghini. Uh, the pro drivers uh, are just that. They are professional racing drivers, but they aren't so good that they are out of reach of the quick amateurs. Uh, although, that said, Cedric Limer, who is probably one of the faster of the non-pro drivers, he's better than an AM, but he's not a, a true professional driver, he struggled to stay with some of the pros at Monza, and it was the help of Jonathan Cochet uh, that got the car up the order in race two. Race two was one in which we had people running low on fuel right at the very end, like uh, Bortolotti and Varvarusis and Andrea Palmer also fell right back towards the end of that race, so your own Mull got second and Limer and Cochet got third, uh, really out of nowhere. Your own Mull, we've seen race here in the past in the Porsche Super Cup and he starts seventh on the grid, the Dutchman, so he's another driver to keep an eye to, I think. There is the grid, the Raging Bulls ready to go, the co-drivers stride up the grid and the countdown continues, ready for 50 minutes of racing. I still think a dark horse, even though he doesn't know the cars that well, is going to be Giovanni Venturini, who starts fifth on the grid. He was here last year in GP3 and has raced in things like Formula Renault 2-litre and uh, Formula Renault 3.5 as well. So he knows a racing car. He doesn't know a GT car, and this is a GT car, effectively. The Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo has had its two races at Monza. It moves from Silverstone to Paul Ricard then to Spa, where it supports the 24 hours, to the Nürburgring as part of the Blancpain 1000 weekend, and then the world final at Sepang in November. Uh, this year, we'll have the final championship round, so rather than it being a non-championship event, it's a very long weekend. The first two days, we'll be qualifying and racing for the final round of the championship, that's Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday, they qualify and race for the world final. So it really is a festival of Lamborghini racing that last year was at Vallelonga. This year moves to Sepang uh, because there is a strong Asian championship as well as a European and indeed a North American championship. So it brings the best across for the final round of the, of the individual series and then for the uh, world final itself. And of course on yet another Formula One venue uh, the rest of the season this championship supports the Blanc Pan Endurance series and goes to some great venues. Silverstone played host to the championship last year and indeed the year before that. And last year we had some great racing, partly thanks to punctured tyres, which came in race one towards the end as people went the wrong way on setup, uh, but also because it's a good circuit, this, the cars are able to exploit all of their power. It's wide enough to overtake as well. And so very shortly, the race will be getting underway from a rolling start. 50 minutes is the duration. And the grid is formed. Doors are open, getting a bit of last-minute cool air for the drivers. Towards the rear of the grid, Tim Richards on the back of the grid, having his second outing in the championship. He only started racing this year. He's a great Lamborghini enthusiast and uh, has done quite a lot of track days in a Lamborghini, but now turning his attention to uh, racing them. And he's never raced at Silverstone before, but he's uh, ahead of Matteo Zucchi on the grid. You've got the uh, Peruvian girl, Karina Lima, and also uh, on the grid is on the ninth row, Shota Abtakava, the uh, Russian circuit owner, owns one circuit in Russia, one in Georgia, team owner, racer, uh, all-round motorsport impresario in Russia. And we are told that the race will start behind the safety car. It will be a safety car start for this race. And that is because, I would imagine, uh, of some water still on the track and also given that uh, they didn't do very many laps in the qualifying session. So a safety car start and then things will get underway in earnest. The grid, I think, is complete. I'm just looking down on it to make sure that the car that went off this morning of Deliguanti is there, number five. But I'm not entirely convinced that it is. Matteo Zucchi's car is there. But, no, Deliguanti, I think, is missing from that grid. 
although the car, we were told, was not that badly damaged, unless it's going to start from the pit lane, which is a possibility. So now the cars get away. Everybody accelerates off behind the safety car and the chance to get some warmth into Pirelli tyres on which these cars will run. So the front of the grid, Andrea Amici lines up alongside Milos Pavlovic. Then you've got on the second row, Andrea Palmer and Alberto Biberti, Giovanni Venturini and Gerhard Trevaza on the third row. And this is the start of the race because when it's a safety car start, as soon as the safety car peels off, sorry, peels off the line, moves away from the line, uh, so the race begins. The clock starts to count. So it's a safety car start. We are effectively, in quotes, racing. The fourth row, or what it is now worth, is your own Mull, who is a soloist. And then uh, car 77, which is started by Dimitri Angelbert. On the fifth row of the grid, Alberto Di Falco. And then the Japanese drivers, uh, Yoshi Mori, who will start. And his Italian co-driver for this race, Giacomo Bari. Row six is where you find Cedric Lima, who is a former champion, and he will go first in number 63. And then Aristoteles Varbarusis sharing this weekend with Sebastian Mercer in the Bernaldi Motorsport car. It will be Varbarusis, the former Clio racer, who will go first. Car number six comes next on the grid, which is the inside of row seven. And Alberto Cerqui, former Superstars racer, will start and then car 34 will be driven in the first stint of the race uh, by Andres Josefsson, partnered by El Pato, who returns to the series, having uh, taken part in it last year. The next car on the grid is going to be that of Laurent Jenny and another returnee, uh, Cyril Lima. It's Laurent Jenny who will go first, another stalwart Lamborghini racer. Simone Pellegrinelli comes next on the eighth row. The ninth row uh, will have the Eurotech engineering car of the dentist Vincenzo Sauto. After 15 years of racing Ferraris, he felt like a change. Uh, Shota Abkazakhava is alongside him. Uh, then the British interest in the race, because on the 10th notional row is where you find the car of Jan van Uitzel, which is shared and indeed started in this race by Jake Rassenbury. Mikhail Spirodinov comes next, ahead of Talos Polishuk, Karina Lima, Tim Richards and Matteo Zucchi. That's all the easy bit, because they're all soloists to round out the grid, which is now scrolling through. But it's kind of academic, because the order is as they run, and they are behind the safety car on this, the first lap of 50 minutes of racing, as the cars now work their way down towards Brooklands. Lights are still on the safety car. You can still see some of the puddles. We had a safety car start for the uh, Formula Renault, Sorry, we had two green flag laps for the Formula Renault race rather than a safety car start, but it's been elected to run an extra safety car lap effectively for the Lamborghinis as they come down towards Brooklands now. And I would imagine they will have two laps, one at a quicker pace just to let them get some warmth into the tyres, and then we should be in business. So the Lamborghini Blanc Pan Super Trofeo pace starts to quicken over the timing line they come. And Andrea Amici then it is who leads them around. Of course, this goes badly if you've elected to put your quicker driver in first. It's the common debate as to whether you put your quick man in first and hope he builds a gap or put him in second and hope he can catch up. Um, common sense says you put him in the second stint because if there's a safety car, that's when you need him. Uh, rather than, as we saw with Adrian Zaug last year, scampering off in the first stint and then a safety car undoing all that good work. But I would think that Amici He's quicker than Roberto Tanker, so it's a bit of a gamble. Amici should fly in the first stint, but then as we saw at Monza, when Roberto Tanker gets in the car, he's not slow, but he's not as quick as the reigning champion, uh, so it starts to lose pace, that car. There's not much to choose between Piscopo and Pavlovic, uh, who will be the real opposition in this race. Then Andrea Palma, Alberto Viberti, and Giovanni Venturini are all soloists. The sixth car in the queue, Gerhard Travalsa and Sandro Bickel. That was the one that caught fire towards the end of the race at Monza, and it would look pretty quick. So, the safety car will be in this lap and we will go racing. So, down come the cars towards Stowe Corner, then through Vale. And Andrea Amici needs to try and scamper off when the lights go to green because he's lost effectively two racing laps here. So, Andrea Amici's opportunity to build up an advantage have disappeared because of the fact that there's this safety car start. So two laps behind the safety car we will have. Down they come now through the end of Vale into Club Corner. 
and Andrea Amici's car at the front of the queue, getting ready for the start of the race. One of the many ran by Auto Carrozzeria Imperiale, alongside one of the many ran by Buonaldi Motorsport, the white and yellow colours carried by Milos Pavlovich, who knows his way around Silverstone. He's been here many, many times, many, many configurations of it when he was a aspiring single-seater driver in British Junior single-seaters in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, Milos Pavlovich then will hand over to Eduardo Piscopo, who we know is no slouch. Uh, keep an eye to the classes as well. We've talked about those at the front, largely in the pro category, but the pro-am and the ams will be good as well, that's for sure, as the field now then works its way up towards the loop speed building as they come onto Wellington Strait the safety car pace car as it is at the moment will peel in at the end of this lap and then we'll be in business for round three of the 2014 Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo with Andrea Amici the pole position driver eager to try and uh, make a move get away from everybody else teams look on eager for the race to start as well 50 minutes we should have had but we're going to be down to about 42 and a half, give or take, by the time they've got to the timing line, some of them. So quite a chunk of that first stint for Amici is eaten into. The pit window, 20 to 30 minutes. Expect him to go closer to the 30 because he wants the track time. Everybody now queues up behind him and Amici will stack them up. He can slow, but once he accelerates, he's got to keep accelerating. You can't go and slow. So once he accelerates, you've got to stay at that pace or go quicker as the cars come then now thundering out of Woodcock Corner, ready to get the race underway with Milos Pavlovich right at the tail of Amici as the lights go green and then go down towards Cops Corner with Pavlovich trying one side and then the other, but Andrea Amici defends stoically as they go to the corner for the first time. Andrea Palmer slots into third place as they head out of Cops going up towards Beckett's now, but the two race leaders absolutely nose to tail and you can see that Pavlovich's plan is to try and get past Amici as soon as he possibly can do, but it's not worked because the gap widens a little bit as they come through Beckett's for the first time and if anything Pavlovich falling back into the clutches of Andrea Palmer who in turn has got Viberti and then Venturini going with him as the cars work their way onto the hangar straight for the first time 77 riding the curb a little bit Dimitri Angelbert who's another Silverstone regular with things like Euro Cup Megane Trophy and GT3 experience around here as well as Lamborghinis but as they come for the first time to Stowe Corner the man in a big big hurry there is 47 Alberto Viberti who's up into third place then He's got himself past Andrea Palmer on a good start and now wants to go after Pavlovich as they come down to the end of Vale. But fair play to Andrea Amici. He's not hanging about, is he? He knows he's got to try and build up a lead and he's going for it. Halfway around the first lap of the race, the advantage grows as the cars work their way now through club, heading past the Silverstone wing and the new pits. One or two run way, way wide. That's going to be a track limits issue if they carry on like that for the remainder of the race. It's very inviting to run wide out of club corner, but it goes down very badly with race officials in the UK these days. Up towards Village comes the race leader, Andrea Amici, trying to build this lead. But Pavlovich can't get away, can he, from Alberto Viberti, who is doing a very good job in second spot then. Viberti, another man with single-seater experience, former Formula Renault driver, comes then onto Wellington straight. Good battles developing in the Pro-Am and Am categories lower down the order. 77, Dimitri Angelbert accelerates off down towards Brooklands. Angelbert is one of those that runs in Pro-Am. Mikko Eskillen with his uh, Finnish co-driver had punctures at Monza. They really struggled with the setup of the car there, hoping to go better here. But Eskillen not as quick as Angelbert. So as they work their way now towards the end of lap number one, Andrea Amici, who led behind the safety car by dint of being the pole man, comes over the timing line and the margin that he's got at the end of one proper racing lap is 1.8 seconds already and the change has happened has it yes for second place because Andrea Palmer has gone through ahead of Pavlovich and down to fourth has gone Alberto Viberti so there's been a bit of a shuffle and it is Andrea Palmer who benefits the most he comes up into second spot third now Pavlovich fourth Viberti fifth is as they come over the timing line number 32 which is Giovanni Venturini and then Gerhard Travalsa running in sixth place at the moment heading pro-am the leaders come out of Beckett's and Travalza coming under attack from your own Mull. Now, your own Mull, number 22, though, the Dutchman is one of the pro drivers in the Team Germany run car. The next pro am driver is Angelbert, in fact, who is eighth overall, second in class, and third in class at the moment as they come down towards Stoke Corner is number 90, Alberto Di Falco. There is 22, which is your own Mull, trying to find a way into the top six, but Gerhard Travalza for the moment hangs on to him. 
and hangs onto the place. We've had a spin from Laurent Jenny, who got it wrong on the first lap, but has rejoined. 40 minutes to go. We've had the first 10, therefore, the first fifth of the race done. As a curl popping Angelbert gets all unsettled, coming into club corner, bounces wide, and that is going to put Alberto Di Folco right onto his tail, I think, now. Race leaders heading up towards Abbey once again. As they do so, Andrea Amici has pulled out another six tenths in the first sector alone, but he has to do this. He's got to try and build a big lead, if he can, for his co-driver. On board with Travalza, number 25, as he comes up towards the right-hander at Village. Then burst of acceleration, stand on the brakes again, hook it left at the loop, road opens up into Aintree, and then onto Wellington straight they come. Down towards Brooklands, Gerhard Travalza running in sixth spot. His target is a complete rookie in one of these cars, and Travalza knows his way around them pretty well. That rookie is Giovanni Venturini. Down they come, heading into Brooklands. In the background, Dimitri Angelbert is under attack because Alberto Di Folco has a look for the inside line there, but Di Folco not able to find a way by. So Angelbert it is, who hangs onto the place as they work their way now up through Lafield, nose to tail. Dimitri Angelbert hanging onto the place, but only just Alberto Di Folco looking very committed indeed, and Angelbert being warned about the track limits. So uh, one of a number of drivers who have run wide at club corner. Lead gap is 2.7 seconds now as the margin continues to grow. Andrea Ramici pulling away all the time from Milos Pavlovich and then Andrea Palma. So the car's accelerating through Beckett's. Still surprised that Pavlovich isn't being able to respond either for second place or indeed either of them go after the race leader. But that's the situation we have. Andrea Palma continuing the good work from Monza. This 22-year-old Mull goes through. He's still seventh and he's still close to Trabaza, if not close enough to make a move yet as the cars once again work their way down towards Stowe. Now, the fight is on into the braking area. A challenge made on the outside line there to try and take the place. Your own Mull still on the tail of Gerhard Trabaza out of Stowe, down through Vale. Conditions at Silverstone getting better and better all the time. And there's one very slow car that gets out of the way. Now, who is that? Is that the leader, as was? It's 47 who's slowed. And that's Alberto Viberti, who has slowed right down. And he's letting people go past left, right and centre. Viberti, who was fourth, has got a problem. And very, very slowly, he makes his way now to the pit lane. So on this lap five, Alberto Viberti very slow indeed. And it looks as though it's a mechanical problem that's affected him. And so the man that was fourth is tumbling down the order. That puts now uh, up to fourth Venturini. It puts Travalza fifth. It puts your own Mull up into the top six as well as the leaders work their way once again out of the loop. Venturini in the white car then. Under attack because Travalza is not that far behind. Nor is your own Mull, the Dutchman who raced here in the Porsche Super Cup last year. Runs wide over the kerb. They're all running wide over the kerb coming out of Aintree. That's another part of the circuit if you put all four wheels behind the white line that the race officials will clamp down on you. Now the leader at the end of lap four was Andrea Amici. 2.7 seconds to the good. Now Andrea Palma is the man chasing after him. Over the timing line has just come the race leader. This is the battle between Dimitri Angelbert and Alberto Di Folco. Angelbert is quick, but he's never really been able to show how good he is in one of these cars comes through Cops Corner once again. And with Alberto Viberti coasting to the pit lane, everything shuffles lower down. Another car to keep an eye to is 63 Cedric Lima. Ninth at the moment, 14 seconds back from the race leader. That's the car that will be handed over to Jonathan Cochet. And it's Cochet that will have to do the hard work in that second stint, the former Renault F1 test driver. So as you've got 32 there, coming out of Beckett's Giovanni Venturini, fourth and his first race in one of these cars going well. This is the battle now that's on for second place because the green and grey car is Andrea Palma behind him, closing up under braking at Stowe. He's Milos Pavlovich. They brake, they turn right, and then drop down through Vale once more. Into the pit, incidentally, has just come uh, Viberti. So clearly all is not well. Travazza is leading Pro-Am, and Simone Pellegrinelli is leading the Am class as he dominated at Monza. Pellegrinelli in 12th place at the moment as the second place fight comes through. They're fourth and fifth. And sixth, in other words, Venturini, Travazza, and Mull coming now through club. Your own Mull is the one at the back of that group that runs the widest as the race leader, Andrea Amici, is still trying to pull away from the opposition. Heading up towards the braking zone for the loop once again. We're working lap six at the moment in this 50-minute race. Hard on the brakes there. Look, you can see 
comes number 32, which is Giovanni Venturini, and he's under attack now because the more experienced Lamborghini driver, Gerhard Travaza, you're riding with him, is right on the tail now of the Italian. The Eurotech engineering run car of Venturini versus the Grassa Racing Team car of Gerhard Travaza as he comes now down Wellington Strait. Speed building, and then it's hard on the brakes. Turn left, a gap on the inside, a look on the inside. More in hope than in anticipation, that I think, from Travaza. The gap was there, but he wasn't really near enough to take advantage of it. And so now, as they work their way into Luffield, he tries to stick his nose up the inside of the white car. But again, Venturini is able to defend pretty strongly. Here they come, up towards the timing line once more. The leaders go through. 3.3 seconds is what Amici has built up now over Andrea Palma. It's not that really enough. I think Palma could well, like he was in race one at Monza, be on for a victory here as well, depending on the pace of Piscopo, because Pavlovich, who is third, is falling back just a little bit. You're riding still with Travaza heading up now towards Maggots and then into Beckett's. Left and then right into Beckett's. Use the curb as best you can if the grip is there. Travaza has the speed. He closes midway through Beckett's. He closes more at the final element of the S's and then aims for the left at Chapel Curve. Onto the hangar straight. Is he close enough to attack at the end of hangar straight going into Stoke Corner? Doesn't look like he is at this point. Down they come towards the braking zone once again. through Stowe, down to the end of Vale, that's the next possible overtaking opportunity for Travaza, and off into the gravel, and that is at Cops Corner, has gone number 79, and therefore out of the race is Mikhail Spirodonov, and the kinetic racing team car has lost all of its energy completely, I'm afraid, that is going no further, and Spirodonov, no damage, but rather futilely spinning the wheels, the Marshals go to his aid, but that is Spiridonov out of the race as the fourth-placed battle turns once again up through Abbey. And in fact, your own Mool is struggling to stay with them as Travaza has a look at the inside coming into Village. Can't do it. Again, from a long way back and a bit late, he has a think. Can't do anything about it. You ride with Travaza now. Venturini doing a good job of defending, but of course what this is serving to do is delay him and drop him away from the three leaders. So Venturini is no longer in touch with Pavlovich, who goes out of shot coming into Brooklands. There's the fourth, fifth, sixth fight. Down they come into the braking zone once again. And that is Spidoronov out of the race. And there's now going to be a replay. Yes, he just got it wrong under braking. Ran wide into the gravel. No damage done to the car unless something broke to pitch him off because most people at least turn for the corner. He didn't even do that. So Spidoronov is out, that's for sure. And so far off has he gone, it's not an issue to get a snatch vehicle there to move the car out of harm's way. In other words, you don't need a safety car, period, for example. 2.8 seconds now is the gap between the race leaders, uh, which means that last time, Andrea Palma lapped quicker than the leader. The gap's coming down, so it is for fourth, because once again, really good through the Beckett's S's is Gerhard Travalza, who knows his way around Silverstone. He's raced in these cars here many times in the past, so he's got the experience. And Veraza now comes on to Hangar Straight, still chasing after Venturini. Is he close enough to attack at the end of the Hangar Straight? Still don't think he is, but he's going to have a look. And again, it doesn't really happen. Travalza seems to chance his arm, but again, it's not really a serious move. It's perhaps more to try and unsettle Venturini. But he's never quite close enough, and he's never really got up alongside. He has a look, he goes for a gap, but it's never really on. So for the moment, Venturini hangs on to fourth place. Coming once again through club and off has gone. Cedric Lima, the former champion, has gone off. Is that at Stoke Corner, possibly? And Lima has gone way, way off, and that deprives the chance of Jonathan Cochet driving. It is Stoke Corner, and Cedric Lima is out of the race. And that is something you don't find him do very often, make a mistake. Nürburgring last year, he had a spin. I can't think of another one. So let's have a look at a replay. Oh, he's wrong coming into the corner. Big, big lose. Did it grab under braking and turn him sideways? But well, Lima flies off the road. Big, big moment for him, that. So Cedric Lima is out, no argument about it. And I wonder whether something had been damaged in order to cause the incident. Very, very wide goes Venturini. Right up behind him is Travaza as they work their way down Wellington Strait once again. And Travaza now closing all the while. Is he going to be near enough? Yes, he has a go this time at Brooklands. Is he up alongside? Not fully, but there's contact. Out wide is forced Venturini, and now Travalza makes a gap, and your own Mull tries to buy into this as well in the third of these three cars, but we've had the change for fourth at last. Travalza 
goes through, bit of contact was needed, but he's done it. Venturini is fifth and defending now because your own Mull is right on his tail as they come past the pits. They're going down to that yellow flag zone at Cops Corner, through which the leaders have gone, through which Travalza now goes in fourth place. Fifth, then is Venturini, your own Mull, sixth. Here's the replay. Again, from a long way back, Travalza went for it. This time he commits, he rides the kerbs, but he wasn't fully alongside. No way was he fully alongside, and elbows out wide the white car of Venturini. I'm not really sure that was on from Trevazza. Anyway, it has worked. He's gone through, but we'll wait and see uh, what the general consensus of opinion is about that. The pit window is open, by the way. We've got to 20 minutes very quickly by dint of that long, early stint behind the safety car. And so as the race leaders work their way now uh, through Stowe Corner, expect those that put the slower driver in first to pit soonest those like Amici who have got the quicker driver in first to go to the end of the window but it's only 10 minutes the window goes to the 30 minute mark and the clock counting down as the fourth fifth sixth place cars come through club corner with their 22 year old Mull now the one to try to find a way past Giovanni Venturini and again Mull goes wide coming out of club corner So Andrea Alamici leads two seconds to the good he is as the cars work their way through lap number nine now. Wait and see at the end of this whether we have any uh, pit stoppers. Race leaders then come up towards the end of the lap because they're in that final sector. And you're looking at Maurizio Reggiani who is the R&D director of Automotive Lamborghini being interviewed for Italian television in the pit lane. The leaders come down now through Brooklands. We have got people heading for the pits. And as they're coming over the timing line is Amici. He comes by with Andrea Palmer still chasing him. But I don't think Roberto Tanker's pace in the second stint is going to be good enough to keep Andrea Palmer at bay. In third place, Pavlovich. I'm surprised he's fallen away by four seconds, though, because Pavlovich, we know, is quick. Then it's Travaza, then Venturini, and then Dimitri Angelbert. There is sixth because your own Mull comes into the pits, so also does Alberto Di Falco. They are soloists both, so they will get those pit stops out of the way. And that's a very slow 21, which is Karina Lima. And that's a car heading, I think, for the pit lane. Also in has come Alberto Cerqui, who we don't see the best of yet, the uh, former Superstars racer. And Karina Lima, so slowly, but elects not to pit. So there's a problem, clearly, but she's limping on Arena Limper. Uh, but uh, down the pit lane in the meantime comes the Bernardi Motorsport car 34. That brings in the Andros Josephson car to give way to El Pato. Out gets the Swede, in gets with the wipers now on, the pseudonym Del Pato. We've also had come in car 87, which is Yoshi Mori, to give way to Giacomo Barri, former GT racer in Italy, an Italian Formula 3 racer. So there's quite a lot to look forward to, I think, in the second stint. And also, by the way, Cedric Limer has dug himself out of the gravel in the four-wheel drive car. And so he's back in the race. In has come number eight there, which was Vincenzo Sauto. It is now Manuel Flaminio for Eurotech Engineering. The dentist, Vincenzo Sauto, strides away. And more and more of the teams will be cycling through their pit stops at the end of this next lap. So Andrea Amici still leads the way. And in a moment, the 60 seconds of rest will be up, and so 34 can leave the pit lane now. El Pato it is, the man behind the wheel. So we have got Andrea Amici leading Andrea Palma and then Milos Pavlovic. Dimitri Angelbert went through a moment ago through the shot, as there is Amici staying out for as long as he can, as he needs to, because he's the quicker of the two drivers in that car, so he needs to stay out for as long as he possibly can to build up the advantage. Andrea Palmer in second place, 1.8 seconds back. Two more dive for the pit lane. Venturini, who has been busy defending for the bulk of his stint, comes diving in and on his tail as he comes down the pit lane is Alberto Di Falco. Down the pit lane. Right, so the car of Venturini stops. I said that was Di Falco. It was Alberto Viberti, in fact, who'd had his slow lap a little while ago, but back into the race. But Viberti... Uh, having had a pit stop, has now uh, pitted for the regulation pit stop, Viberti, who lost a lap early on, but was running fourth in the early part of the race. 
There is 33 that comes in this time. That is the Aristoteles Vavarousis and Sebastian Merchant car. Vavarousis will give way now to the young Ecuadorian. More and more of them come down the pit lane, but still it is Amici who leads the way. Andrea Palma going after him with the gap at the start of the lap being 1.8 seconds, but it has gone up in the first sector. That's Cedric Lima bringing his car back to the pit lane and coming slowly offline with gravel dropping out of the bottom of it down to the pit lane. Before long, he's going to go another lap down, isn't he? Because the race leaders aren't too far behind him. Andrea Amici leads the way, but I'm still not convinced he's going to be able to hang on to the... or that car will hang on to the advantage in the second stint. So it is Amici leading. Car number 11. 27 is Palmer. Pavlovich is third as we get to the pit stops for these three leading cars. And there is number 16 serving the mandatory stop, Matteo Zucchi. Now, Zucchi was last on the grid and got himself to 11th place, but ah, interestingly, a new tyre. Now, tyres have in the past been a factor around Silverstone. Last year's races were spiced up at the end by punctures. And Matteo Zucchi going for a new tyre, which could well be significant late in the race. If he's got the confidence to push and others have to manage the tyres, then that could put him in... Andrea Amici goes through, he's going to get two laps at the most out of this window, one to be safe. Pavlovich goes through, but Andrea Palmer now pits, and Palmer is the one to watch, I think, to see, after we've had the round of pit stops, where he will slot back in. So Andrea Palmer is the man, 27, who won the equivalent race at Monza, and remember that he is a soloist, which tends to help. You don't have to worry about a difference in pace from your co-driver, you can just run at the same speed race long. So that means that Amici now leads by 5.2 seconds from Pavlovich. We've got 23 minutes of the race still to run. And the race leaders currently work lap number 12. Andrea Amici, it is up front. As the cars once again head towards Stowe Corner. They're in that middle sector at the moment, the leaders. Interviews for Italian television in the pits. More and more cars come pounding in uh, for the mandatory stop. And with the pit window open for another three minutes, to be safe, you only want to do one more lap. So we've got Andrea Lamici up front, and Cedric Lima has given up the unequal struggle with his car. So, which brings you to the stadium. On the exit of the stadium is pit in, but Cedric Lima is a retirement. There is 31, Simone Pellegrinelli, the dominant driver this year in the AM class in the DT Motorsport car. There is the race leader, Andrea Lamici. Surely he's going to pit this time. I think to be safe, he's going to have to. But as he comes now up through Brooklands, he's making his way towards the end of the lap. I say Brooklands, I mean Aintree, because he's heading to Brooklands. Uh, and he's on the back of traffic as well to work his way past one or two of the back markers. Up the inside, easily done. So Andrea Amici on lap 12 in that last sector of the lap. Is he going to pit this time? Let's see what he elects to do as the car now comes through Luffield. Is he going to pit? Yes, he is. Comes in now. So uh, Andrea Amici heads for the pits. And this is significant because, of course, he leads when he comes in. But come the end of the race, where is that car going to be? It will be taken over now by Roberto Tanka. In has come Pavlovich as well. And I think also Travalza has just come down the pit lane to give way to Sandro Bickel. Yes, he has. So there is Pavlovich, who gives way now to Eduardo Piscopo. That driver change takes place and I think the only other one that we haven't yet had in is number 70 Shota Abkazova. Abkazova and when he has pitted that's everybody so driver change goes on between Travalza and Bickel Sandro Bickel it is who now gets into the car but now the fascination starts to build we need to see when the cars go back out where everybody is relative to their earlier order and has the pit window shuffled anything and really where Andrea Palmer is as the soloist Eduardo Piscopo is ensconced behind the Bonaldi car number three's steering wheel ready to go we've got 21 minutes and counting of the race remaining number three is ready just about and Andrea Lamici now the race leader in quotes serving his pit stop away goes number three which is now Eduardo Piscopo. Let's have some news if we can from the pits from Jack. Very busy down here in the pit lane. We've just had, as we saw Andrea Amici, uh, hand 
hand over to his teammate Roberto Tanker and uh, the pit stop all went well. He's over there on the pit wall, going to try and grab a word with him in a, in a few moments' time, but the pit stop went well, I think. They'll be pleased with that. So we've got the cars with just about everybody having served their pit stop now, racing, and a good pit stop for car number 11, as you've heard. So it is now Roberto Tanker who leads, but look who's right on his tail, because Andrea Palmer there, who's into his stride, is right up behind him. So this is the battle for the race lead as they work their way down Hangar Straight, number 27, is Andrea Palmer, he pulls to the inside line and Palmer is going to go through on the inside, easy done. So after all of Amici's work, Roberto Tanker just not able, I'm afraid, to get into his rhythm quick enough. And so that's another example of why you want your quick driver in second so he can really pound on and try and bring the car up the order. Whereas now Tanker potentially is going to fall back. So after the pit stops, change of lead, 27, there he is, Andrea Palmer goes ahead on the outlap, effectively as it is, for the leading car, number 11, as was Roberto Tanka. So we've had that lead change. Up front, it is Andrea Palma. Now, where in all of this is Eduardo Piscopo? Because that's the other car that needs factoring in. Thank you for the caption for the moment. We've seen it change, but it will be updated at the end of the lap. So Eduardo Piscopo in car number three, that's the next one to see if it can make any more progress relative to tanker but a five second stop and go to number 27 which is Andrea Palmer sorry a half second uh, stop and go 0.5 of a second for not respecting the pit stop time limit therefore it was a 79 and a half second stop not an 80 second stop you get a stop go to make up the difference how you can do a stop go for half a second it's virtually impossible so it's going to be uh, a stop go penalty as quick as and Andrea Palmer then the race leader gets this penalty the, the stop go isn't really the problem it's the drive time through the pit lane so he really is now in trouble as Milos Pavlovich explains how his race has been going but Andrea Palmer with a 0.5 stop and go penalty that I'm afraid has just undone the race for him because driving through the pit lane is roughly 20 seconds so that's going to drop him way way down to about seventh place as a prediction so Andrea Palmer needs to try and break away from Roberto Tanker, but now Eduardo Piscopo becomes the man most likely to. And if you're wondering how all this can be monitored, the timing system is such that each car records a time. When it leaves the pit lane, it records a time. You take one from t'other, and if it's less than 80 seconds, an alert is brought up. That's given to the race director, and he will apply the penalty accordingly to make up the shortfall. So half a second doesn't come much closer, but it's still wrong, it's still short. And so, therefore, Andrea Palmer has to serve a penalty. Going very wide there at Stowe was Karina Lima getting out of the way, but she's still going at a very slow pace as now Eduardo Piscopo is under attack, isn't he, at the end of Vale? Because number three is Piscopo being forced up onto the kerb and right up alongside as the cars now come through is number 22 which is your own Mull who goes right around the outside but again runs way off the road your own Mull has done that before but he's got the pace certainly he's got so much pace he's way in excess of the track limits but he's gone through round the outside so your own Mull now is looking very impressive indeed for a race win because he was fourth he's now third in the expense of Piscopo he's quicker than Tanker and the leader has got to pit so assuming that your own Mull doesn't go and continuously offend on track limits then he could be on for a race win here if he goes much wider at club next lap, he'll get charged to get back in, I think. He was way over the kerb. But your own Mull, number 22, you've just seen him gain a place. He should be the race winner, I think, given his pace at the moment. Down he comes towards Brooklands, but Mull absolutely charging. He finished uh, second at Monza. Looked very strong there. And there is Eduardo Piscopo. Now we're getting news of a car having spun and rejoined at Cops Corner, but not the number of the car, but we've had drama at Cops, as there is Piscopo. Having dropped back behind your own mill, coming now towards the timing line. 16 more minutes of the race remain. The leader is in to serve the stop go, and he's gone. So as he comes down the pit lane, he's losing places. Right through has gone Tanker, the new race leader. Then it's Mull, then it's Piscopo. And then the next car that we need to see through is going to be there, the Pro-Am leader, which is Sandro Bickel in the car started by Gerhard Travaza from the Grassa Racing Team. So this is the class leader at Pro-Am, Sandro Bickel. The one that caught fire in race two at Monza, but looking as good as ever now. And then second in that class behind is Alberto Di Folco. You're riding on board with Sandro Bickel. So coming through the Beckett's S's now. And the car about to make its way onto 
the hanger straight. Out of the back it's S's, through Chapel Curve, speed building, and this glorious noise now as the car sets off down to Stowe. Down through Vale, riding the curb, and then the car sets off down to the end of Vale and into Club Corner. There is your own Mull, who I still think is going to be the race winner of this. So he is pressing on now, catching up to Roberto Tanker. At the start of this lap, the gap was 1.6 seconds between them. 47 that's trying to go with them is Alberto Viberti, but he's rather rogue in all of this because he has lost a lap after that mysterious problem where we saw the car slow out on the circuit and he had to pit and he's trying to unlap himself and the danger is he gets involved with somebody else's battle ah and then the car suddenly slows right down again as it had done earlier on so Viberti's problems have struck once more graphically just no drive out of the corner the cars get up and go got up and went down to the end of the straight into Brooklyn's come the leaders Eduardo Piscopo still pressing on and there is the AM class leader, Simone Pellegrinelli. He dominated the AM class at Monza and he's dominating it again here. He's on target for three wins in a row, in fact, he's Pellegrinelli. He is well clear of his class opposition, Shota Abkazava. So Pellegrinelli, although he's under attack there from cars in a different class, still driving very well indeed as the leaders go through. And now Eduardo Piscopo has woken up. He's ahead of your own mull. So Piscopo back ahead of the Dutchman and is on the tail of Roberto Tanker. So having lost out to your own mull, he's got himself back up ahead of the Dutchman. And so now the situation is that although your own mull is on the back of Piscopo, it's a battle between these two for the race lead because Tanker is easy prey, I'm afraid, now to them. He hasn't got the pace. He's lapping slower by two seconds a lap. And so now as they work their way down Hanger Straight, Eduardo Piscopo should be able to go through. The question is whether your own Mull can match his pace. Mull had a slow lap last time. I think he made a mistake because he's challenging again on the inside at Stoke Corner. Is there a gap? No, there isn't. Mull is trying to take advantage of Piscopo being held up by the race leader, Roberto Tanker, and take advantage of this as they come to the end of the veil. But Mull closes up under braking. Can he go to the outside? No, not close enough. Tanker leads the way, but that car is going to lose places. It's just not got the speed of those around it. So Tanker comes past the wing. Mull drops back a little bit there. Perhaps he's thinking, OK, let Piscopo challenge for the lead, and then I'll try and follow him through. There's a warning flag being displayed now for Manuel Flaminio for track limits, and Piscopo goes for the lead coming out of Farb. He's alongside. He's got the inside line for Village, and you can see your own Mull's plan. He's going to go through with him. The two leading cars go past Tanker. So Roberto Tanker drops down to third place. Piscopo goes a little bit wide, and your own Mull has got the speed. He's right back on the tail now of the Italian driver. 12 minutes to go. So Eduardo Piscopo versus your own Mull, two young career racing drivers in very powerful GT cars, running nose to tail. Roberto Tanker then falls back in third place. And your own Mull has a look on the inside line. He's not giving up, is he? He may have lost the place to Piscopo, but he tries to fight back coming into Brooklyn's. Can't do it there. He's applying the pressure all the time, though, to the race leader. And coming now through the right-hander, this is Luffield up towards the timing line they come. Past the pits now comes Eduardo Piscopo, the new race leader, three tenths up on your own mill. 0.3 of a second with 11 and a half minutes to go. This should be a great battle to run to the end. A lap is over two minutes, so they're going to get, what, five more laps in? Up now towards the... Left-hander of Maggots goes Eduardo Piscopo, but for the moment he certainly can't shake off the man behind. They've both got past Tanker, and so this is now the lead battle. Number three, the white car, Eduardo Piscopo versus 22 year old Mull. Tanker is third in the background, and his last lap was a 2.13. He's being reeled in by Sandro Bickle, so Roberto Tanker is going to fall down the order, I'm afraid, a bit more before the end. He's just not as fast as one or two of those around him. Out of Stowe, down through Vale goes now the race leader. So it is, for the moment, the Italian, Eduardo Piscopo, who leads the way. Going with him still is your own Mull. And then in third place, Roberto Tanker, but for how much longer? Because Sandro Bickle, who is leading the Pro-Am category, could well be third overall come the end of this as the cars now make their way once again up to the 
right-hander. This is Abby, and left at farm. In set to one, your own mull was slightly slower by seven hundredths. In set to two, we'll find out in a moment, because that is at the end of this next sequence of corners. So once they've worked their way out of Aintree and they come onto Wellington Strait, we'll have a better idea. Up towards the end of sector two, they come. I've got to suggest that your own mull looks like he's dropping away. So my prediction of him being the winner was good. But now life is a bit more difficult. He's lost another tenth in that middle sector, but he tries to close up under braking and he takes a tighter line that helps bring him back onto the tail of Eduardo Piscopo. They're in the stadium and they've got 10 minutes to go into the last 10 minutes of the race. So frustration certainly for Andrea Amici because he can see his hard work early in the race disappearing. But of course, that was one of the downsides uh, of having a shorter race stint available because of the safety car laps that were introduced at the start. It's one of the downsides of putting your quick driver out first. So race has nine and a half minutes still to run. And the order is Piscopo from Mull from Tanker, who is 3.4 seconds up on now. Giovanni Venturini, who is up into fourth place. So Venturini has got himself ahead of Sandro Bickle. And Venturini for the podium is on because he is 3.4 seconds back from Tanker. And he's lapping at the moment four seconds a lap quicker. And remember that he was well up early on, although it's his first race in one of these cars. He seemed to drop down a bit on the pit stops. But he's fighting back now very vigorously indeed. And so number 32, Giovanni Venturini for the podium is on. And your own Mull here closes Piscopo. Andrea Palmer, by the way, after his pit stop, is in sixth place and still trying to make good. We've got just over eight and a half minutes to go now as the cars come uh, through club corner. Your own Mull not dropping off the back of Piscopo, but equally he's not close enough to really have a go at him, is he? Not for the moment. Is he biding his time? Again, they're both very wide coming out of club and they're the wrong side of the kerbs. through Abbey they go once again up through farm and now they're heading towards village. Eduardo Piscopo was slower in sector one so your own mull gets back onto his tail. Fascinating cat and mouse battle between these two that we're enjoying here. Round three of the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. It's race one of two from Silverstone and Eduardo Piscopo is the leader but your own mull going with him. Both of them new to the championship this year. Now they make their way down once again into the braking zone for Brooklands. This is where Mull was a bit braver last time. And again, he takes that tighter line. He comes out of the corner close to the back of the leading car, but not close enough to challenge, I don't believe. So now Luffield, he has a look on the inside, and this is on, I think, is it? Almost, almost, almost. Eduardo Piscopo just able to cut across the front, take that line for the corner. Now they come over the timing line once again. Seven minutes remain on the clock as they turn their way now up to Beckett's. Coming out of Cops Corner as they came over the line, the gap was 0.6 of a second, but that was a bit larger than it had been. Largely, I think, because Moore had to really stand on the brakes. He goes now up through the Beckett's S's once again. Eduardo Piscopo, different line. Again, you see a much tighter apex for that second part of the Beckett's S's from your own Moore in second spot. Coming now onto the Hangar Straight. Is this going to be a part of the circuit where the gap can come down? Piscopo leads the way. Your own Mull second. Giovanni Venturini is, by the way, up into third place. He's got past Tanker. And Mull goes for the inside. He thinks about it. Dives up the inside, but too far back. And by the time he committed too late, the corner arrives. And so he has to back out of that and turn into the right-hander at Stoke Corner. Good idea. Good effort. Didn't pay off. And so now they go down to the end of Vale. Still no opportunity. And there a spin for Piscopo right in front of the leader. That gives the race to your own mull on a plate. Eduardo Piscopo loses it coming out of club. The pressure tells. And he's going to rejoin, but he's going to lose even more places. Lap number 19. Eduardo Piscopo spins at club. And that means it's going to be a very different look when the cars next come over the timing line. He has rejoined in what is second place he's got Venturini on his tail could have been worse but I think Venturini's now going to make a move coming up towards village he tries the outside line there can't do it and Eduardo Piscopo hangs on to the place now as they work their way once again up into the loop but your own Mull new to the championship this year looks like it could be on for a victory what else is going on lower down the field that's Andrea Palmer look trying to get a move on 
Uh, Roberto Tanker coming out of Aintree, way wide goes Palmer. That means that Sandro Bickel has got past them. Venturini challenging as they come down the Wellington Strait as well into Brooklands. Again, Piscopo has that very wide approach. Deep into the corner he goes. But the race leader coming up at the end of lap number 19 will be number 22, Jeroen Mull, who goes through them past the pit. And not only does he lead, he's got a big lead over Piscopo. And I'll tell you what the gap is as soon as anybody else crosses the timing line because it is 11 seconds. It's a monster advantage. In third place now, 32, Venturini. In fourth place, it's 27, Palmer. In fifth place, it's number 11, Roberto Tanker. And we've had a change for the lead, as you see a replay of the spin for Eduardo Piscopo. A change for the lead overall there. A change for the lead of Pro-Am because something has happened to Sandro Bickel. That car, the Travalza car, has disappeared. And so number 90, Alberto Di Folco now leads the class. So down the hangar straight come the leaders. But as I say, we've had a change in Pro-Am. Alberto Di Folco leads now from Mikko Eskillenum. And then third in Pro-Am is 33, Sebastian Mershon. So it is Sandro Bickel who has dropped down into fourth place, having been leading it on the previous lap. Four minutes to go. Again, it's a lively end to a Lamborghini race around Silverstone. And your own Mull is going to seemingly score victory. So the race leader with just under four minutes to go is your own Mull. Eduardo Piscopo there in second spot. Then it's Venturini, Palma, Tanker. And in sixth place, Alberto Di Folco looking for a maiden class victory here. The double winner at Monza, Aristoteles Varvarusis. Different co-driver, of course, here, but third in class at the moment. Now, can he get another place before the very end? This is the new Pro-Am leader I've been talking about, Alberto Di Folco, in the Autocarrozzeria Imperiale car. So, after whatever has happened to number 25, Sandro Bickel, then he has been able to profit from that to gain the place. Through Brooklands he comes, past Cedric Lima's stricken car. And the leader is on what I would suggest is his penultimate lap now. Three more minutes remain, but they're not going to get uh, another one in. Two more at least after that. So it looks as though it's going to be a victory for your own Mull. And there, heading through Cox's corner now, number 90, which is Alberto Di Folco. turns his way out of Cops and Di Folco is well clear in Pro-Am uh, in the Am class Pellegrinelli versus Abkozava and that in turn also is quite a big gap now there heading into Stowe's own Mull trying to work his way through traffic but the car that's in front of him and preventing him from getting past Mikhail Spidoronov back out of the gravel don't forget Spidoronov he was off early on in the race and your own Mull can't get past him. So this is not true, but proving to be very helpful now, I'm afraid. Your own Mull tucked up behind as he comes through club corner. Into the last two minutes of the race, they're going to squeeze one more lap out of this. Eduardo Piscopo has got the measure, I think, over Giovanni Venturini. Those cars, in turn, make their way up now towards Abbey. Just over 90 seconds of the race remaining so the Italian driver Eduardo Piscopo kicking himself for that spin but at least he's been able to hang on to second place which is encouraging and that hopefully is where he's going to be able to finish the race he comes now down Wellington straight once again Heading into the braking area. Some debris flies, and again he has that wider approach to the corner than does, for example, Venturini, who is still chasing after him. And now the cars work their way up towards Luffield once again. In the meantime, your own Mull, who never really shone in the Carrera Cup last year, the Super Cup, has done a very good job of adapting to a whole new car. And he is the man who leads the way as he comes across the line by 9.4 seconds. The gap has come down, but it's not come down by enough to make that a problem. 
race leaders that currently on the last lap this is round three of the Lamborghini Blanc Pound Super Trofeo. There is the race leader, which is your own Mull. And it looks as though the win is going to go his way. Down he comes to Stowe Corner. Your own Mull, who raced in the German Carrera Cup, started off as a single seater aspirant, drove in the German Formula 3 Cup and then decided that a single seater career just wasn't going to happen for him. And like many young drivers, Changed focus, thought about GT cars as an option and moved to Porsche racing in which he's had good success and now Lamborghinis in which conceivably he's going to have even more success. Traffic ahead, is that going to be a problem? Let's see, your own mull turns now through Abbey and with nine and a half seconds, give or take in hand, it looks as though it's going to be his victory. A very impressive drive this has been for your own Mull. Turns his way now up towards the end of the lap. Comes out of Aintree. Makes the run now down Wellington Strait. And the Dutchman is on target for a victory in the Lamborghini Blancpain Super Trofeo. Helped in part by Eduardo Piscopo having that spin, but even so, he'd been getting closer and closer and applying the pressure, and indeed at one stage was ahead of him. So, through the stadium, for the last time, comes Jeroen Mull. He will make his way in a moment up towards the chequered flag. And it's looking good for him, this, as he powers his way towards the line. It's round three of the championship. It is won by Jeroen Mull. Jeroen Mull victorious at Silverstone. He crosses the timing line and Eduardo Piscopo should come through for second place, but he's going to be rather distant, I think, given that he had that spin and lost time. In the end, he comes home ahead of Giovanni Venturini. So Piscopo second, Venturini takes third, and Andrea Palma fourth. Palma 13 seconds away from the leader and with a pit stop, drive in, drive out, being 20 seconds. Were it not for the stop go, he would have won the race. In fifth place, Pro-Am winner Alberto Di Folco. In sixth is Roberto Tanker. Seventh, Andrea Ciccato. And for eighth place, it is Sebastian Merchan and Aristoteles Vavarousis. Ninth goes the way of 87, which is Yoshi Mori and Giacomo Barri in the top ten. Dimitri Angelbert and Misko Eskilinen. And this car is going to be 12th. It is Simone Pellegrinelli for three in a row in the AM category. He was the man that won both at Monza and Simone Pellegrinelli is victorious once again. Comes through now and takes three in a row in the AM class. A very impressive start to his Lamborghini career. He's new to the championship this season. Your own Mull, an impressive start to his Lamborghini career. And the Dutch driver can celebrate a victory, but in his first season in these cars, he has taken the battle to not only people with a bit more Lamborghini knowledge, but also a few drivers that have got a, a better track record in other categories, like, for example, a Pavlovic or a Piscopo, and he's come out on top. So all round, I think, that's a very impressive effort by Jeroen Mull, and we may get a chance to hear from him uh, once the drivers have made their way from Park Ferme up towards the podium. Your own Mull is the race winner. Second goes to Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovich. And third to another rookie, indeed not only in his first season, but his first race in one of these cars, Giovanni Venturini. So a good job done by the Italian. Confirmation of the results, 22 laps we had started behind the safety car. Your own Mull takes the win from Eduardo Piscopo with Giovanni Venturini third. Andrea Palma with that stop go drops to fourth ahead of Alberto Di Folco, the class winner. Tanka and Amici survive for sixth ahead of Cerqui and Ciccato. Vavarussi's a merchant eighth ahead of Mori and Barry. Eskilinen and Angelbert tenth. Travalza and Bickel somehow drop to 11th. Pellegrinelli wins for the third time in a row the AM class. Abkazava 13th ahead of Matteo Zucchi from the back of the grid. Alpato and Josefsson come home 15th ahead of Flaminio and Salto. The Brit, Jake Rattenbury, 17th with Jan van Oetzel ahead of Alberto Di Verti. Lima and Jenny, 19th ahead of Tim Richards. The troubled Karina Lima was in 21st. And then Spidoranov after his gravelly moment, 20 seconds. We lost Polychuk, we lost Cedric Lima as well. The cars head down the pit lane and a very happy Jeroen Mull is in a few moments, I'm sure, going to 
leap out of the car. He's taken a long time, it must be said, getting back to the pit lane, but he wants to celebrate the moment, I think. And here at Silverstone, your own mill takes honours. So your own mill's car stops, and in a moment he hopefully will clamber out and have a word. There is Alberto Di Folco, who takes honours in the Pro-Am class. The pros, your own mull ahead of Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovic and then Giovanni Venturini. The Pro-Ams, Alberto Di Folco ahead of Valvarusis and Mersham and then Yoshi Mori and Giacomo Barry for third in class. And of the Ams, Pellegrinelli ahead of Abkazava, ahead of the third place in the class, El Pato and Josefsson. So as the drivers there make their way to the presentation area, interviews take place in the pit lane. And your own mull grinning from ear to ear. Understandable because it was a very impressive drive. And remember, he's new to the championship this year. He's had to adapt from one sort of uh, GT car, a Porsche, to a Lamborghini. And your own mull has done a great job. Let's hear if we can from your own mull because Jack is poised, ready to have a word with the winner. So your own mull is uh, down here in the pit lane, having taken off his helmet, and uh, he's just chatting to our uh, Italian TV colleagues. Let's Alberto. stick the mic here. I can make up for, for lost time. Congratulations. Thank you. Your own, a quick word. Uh, congratulations on your win, a great result. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh, we had some bad luck in the beginning uh, in Monza. Uh, first race, we made up for that in the second race. Um, now I yeah, got a little bit of bad luck due to the qualifying that got cancelled and my free practices that yeah, we were still trying to solve some problems but uh, in the end I found my speed in the race now and proved that I'm fast enough. Do you think you could have overtaken uh, Piscopo anyway before he spun? I already overtook him before but I had to give that place back because um, after I already passed him I run wide, uh, ran wide and just to be sure that I didn't get penalised for that I gave the place back um, as a safety. Uh, and after that, yeah, I was, I was way quicker. It's, it's a tough track to get past people, and he's good in defending. But um, uh, hopefully I pressured him into his uh, mistake, and then I won after all. Brilliant. Congratulations. Thank you. So good to hear from your own mull. It's a very happy race, Victor. Eduardo Piscopo and Milos Pavlovic, I think, will be a bit frustrated uh, with that second place. Certainly Pavlovic did a very good early stint, but strangely didn't have the ultimate pace, did he, to take that fight to... Andrea Ramici, nor Andrea Palma, who, as a soloist, is very much a dark horse when he's uh, in one of these races. You kind of think to look for the single-seater stars, but Andrea Palma knows his way around a racing car, and had it not been for that stop-go penalty, he would have won the race, so given where he finished at the end, relative to Euro Mull. So he'll be really furious about making that mistake in the pit stop, and the team will. And uh, Andrea Palma, no doubt, will fight back tomorrow. But he won at Monza in the equivalent race, the first race, the Saturday race. Is he going to be able to uh, strike a victory tomorrow? ends for the disappointment. So as the drivers very shortly will go to the podium, they then think about tomorrow's race and Silverstone will be given over to more track activity, more cars and indeed qualifying before the end of the day. Uh, the result of that race, by the way, is the grid for tomorrow's race. So even though that was uh, decided by free practice, because qualifying never really as such happened, uh, it will be back to convention for race two of the weekend. And Silverstone's pit straight, Silverstone's new pit straight in contrast. There's the Silverstone wing introduced a few years back, which is the home for the World Endurance and Formula One events here. But Blancpain and its support races run out of the perhaps more user-friendly traditional pits. And there's the BRDC's clubhouse with the drivers then very shortly to make their way up to the podium. And the marshals are busy sweeping the track because they've got another Formula 3 race to look forward to in a moment. 
and uh, action goes on all afternoon at Silverstone. It's a great weekend for the fans, busy uh, all the way through Saturday and Sunday with championships that you don't see more than once in the UK, with the exception of British Formula 3, all the others are visiting series. And so as the Lamborghini officials round up the drivers, it will be the AMS podium first, and that means that we should have Simone Pellegrinelli as a three in a row class winner out first with Shreta Abkazava and then again a return to the championship Alpato and Andres Josefsson for uh, third in the category they will make their way out very shortly so for the drivers the podium is dressed and the trophy should be there champagne should be ready and so any moment we will have the drivers making their way out and then the race tomorrow we'll, we shall see whether it's going to have any bearing but having spent his race in the pit lane Jack Nichols has come to look at the celebrations good drive by your own mill yeah very impressive wasn't it uh, considering how far down he started on the grid obviously the grid wasn't really representative considering the, uh, the lack of a qualifying session but it was a brilliant drive and he's and he's over the moon with it uh, down in the pit lane so out come the ams for third place it is El Pato and his uh, co-driver Andres Josefsson who make their first outing of the season for second in the AM class Shota Abkazava steps forward the Russian circuit owner and promoter and team owner and for the third time this year a class win goes the way of Simone Pellegrinelli, who was utterly dominant at Monza and does the same here at Silverstone. So the trophies will be presented, and fine trophies they are in this championship, but great racing as ever that we have had. It's good to see the championship growing, isn't it? Because year on year it gets bigger and, and the quality of driver improves. Absolutely. I mean, especially uh, this season with the, the drivers running at the front. You know, a pair of Piscopo and Pavlovich is, is very impressive, and uh, it's great to see the likes of Andrea Amici also returning. But like you say, more than 20 cars on the grid here this weekend for what started off as essentially a sort of amateur field is now getting more and more impressive. And as we make the point every round, the parallels, it's where young drivers go to try and launch a GT career. This is a good place to do it. And it's being taken more seriously, isn't it? As you say, it was perhaps for the gentleman races, the AMS, but more and more people think as a pro, I'll go and do this. Well, it's not going to be long, I don't think, before we see Andrea Amici, for example, in the Grand Prix Endurance Series or some other GT event around the world because he's shown himself to be a very, very capable uh, young driver. So uh, I think we'll see him moving on pretty soon. I agree with that. Yes, it was out of this that Eugenio Amos came a few years ago and he went into the Blanc Pan series initially with what else? Because he used to sell them uh, a Lamborghini. He used to be the sales manager at Lamborghini Bergamo, but now he drives a Ferrari. And there, Simone Pellegrinelli in the middle is the man spraying the champagne as the winner of the AM class. Three out of three. And although he perhaps didn't humble as many pro or pro-AM drivers as he did at Monza, because he's never been here before, still an impressive effort there. So trophies will be brought ready for the pro-AM uh, podium. Alberto Di Falco victorious. And again, taking the race as a whole, curious that teams elected Amici and Tanker as an example to run the gun driver first, especially when... They didn't know it at the time, I'll grant you, but they uh, had that uh, full race opportunity decrease a little bit because of the safety car laps. Out come the Pro-Ams. So for third, uh, Yoshi Mori and Giacomo Bari. For second, it will be Aristoteles Favarusis and the Ecuadorian, Sebastian Mercham. And then the Pro-Am class winner, the man that will head to the top step of the podium, is Alberto Di Falco. This again shows the competitiveness of the grid because you know, last time out in Monza we had Yoshimori racing at the front. Mm. Absolutely right, absolutely. Different co-driver for him this weekend in Giacomo Barry, but even so it's been a mighty effort by all involved. And Alberto Di Falco takes his first class win of the year.
So there are the drivers, Alberto Di Falco in the middle, and his second at race tomorrow, one hopes, will be just as successful for him. I like the trophies this year, the bronze, the silver and the gold. No, very nice, isn't it? Lamborghini put a lot of effort into this championship. There's a very good, very well-policed championship that gives good racing. There's a great social scene with the Lockpan Lamborghini hospitality unit being the place to go on a Saturday evening. But, of course, like all serious racing drivers, they drink nothing but espresso all night, do they, Jack? <laughs> no, I'm sure that's the case. I'm sure that's the case. But uh, presumably there's, there's one gold trophy left over somewhere for the drivers because they must have had two in preparation, so I might... Uh, on the way back, see if I can find it somewhere. And if you look on eBay later and you find a trophy, <laughs> you'll know exactly where it's come from, won't you? And there's also the Pirelli trophy that's given to Alberto Di Falco as the winner. And Yoshi Mori is very happy. And he's about to get very wet, I fear, because the champagne is being readied. And some very happy drivers on the podium at Silverstone after this third round of the championship. And tomorrow's conditions are meant to be better, so they hopefully won't need a safety car start. It should be a dry race throughout. Yeah, that, that'll be good, I think, to see the 20-odd uh, the cars thundering down towards Cops Corner. I remember it from last season. I watched it, actually, on the, uh, on the start in Gantry, and it was really spectacular to see. And uh, the race last year was, was just as entertaining. In fact, we had Adrian Newey here last week, didn't we, in the, who ended up in the barriers on the uh, formation lap or reconnaissance lap, it might even have been. I don't think he made it to the grid. No, you're right. It was the out lap yeah. from the pits. It was the actual installation lap. That's right. So that's when there was a guest car. There's no real need for a guest car because the championship is so strong anyway now. Numerically, it's there. So out come the top three in the pro category. First race in one of these cars, and he's third. Giovanni Venturini steps onto the third step on the podium. For second place, out come Milos Pavlovich and Eduardo Piscopo, who's got some explaining about that spin to do. And then for the top step of the podium, Jeroen Mull takes victory. This is his first season in the championship, and as I said in the course of the race, he may not have been an absolute gun in the Porsche Super Cup, but he's already adapted well to a Lamborghini. So trophies presented from Maurizio Reggiani, who is the R&D director of uh, Automobili Lamborghini. The second place trophies are there. And the, the top step of the podium goes, and the trophy with it, to Jeroen Lul, a very happy man. And for my money, he drove very well in that race. Absolutely, he had Eduardo Piscopo spin uh, right in front of him, but as he pointed out down there, he'd already made a pass and then sure. given it back just in case he got a penalty. So he was confident that even if that hadn't happened, he'd have gone on to, uh, to win the race. And it was, uh, as you say, an, an impressive performance. And, but I think Piscopo will be very frustrated. Certainly, him and Pavlovich certainly don't look over the moon up there today. But I'm still surprised Pavlovich was losing time against Amici in that first stint. You, know, you tend to think with his reputation and what he's done in single seat as admittedly a different type of car, but he should have been doing better. Well, he's got plenty of GT experience as well in the FIA GT1 World Championship a couple of years That's ago. True. Yeah. Um, but I think, if anything, that goes to show Andrea Amici's uh, performance and pace. As we've said before, he is definitely one to watch for the future. But your own Mull, a very impressive driver. And he's a very happy man, that is for sure. Your own Mull, it is, who is the winner of round three of the Lamborghini Blanc Pound Super Trofeo here at Silverstone. The drivers now will all get together, I think, on the podium for the family portrait, as it's dubbed. All the class winners, all the podium finishers from all the three classes go to the podium for photographs. And as they have the photographs taken, let's confirm the championship. This is the AM category, where Simone Pellegrinelli is the man who leads now, with Shota Abkazaba behind, then Flaminio and Sauto joint third, ahead of Mikhail Spidoronov, then Tim Richards with Jake Rattenbury and Jan Van Utzel next from Karina Lima. And the new scorers, Alpato and Andros Josefsson, are next. Mike Edmonds, the Louis family Boccolari, 
not here this weekend. Danny Gwinty never got into the race uh, because of the damage sustained in his qualifying accident, so uh, we lost that car. Baclav Peck not here this weekend either. The way that it looks in Pro-Am is thus. Aristoteles Varvarousis has 42 against Alberto Di Falco's 37. The Amps of Mirko Bortolotti then 30 ahead of Matteo Zucchi. Then it is Yoshi Mori ahead of Sandro Bickel and Gerhard Trevaza. Those that have joined the championship this weekend, including uh, Sarah Lima or Giacomo Bari to be found at the bottom of the standings. And then, as far as the Pro Cup is concerned, Pavlovich and Piscopo lead the way. Jeroen Mull is next, ahead of Andrea Palma, and then Koshe and Lime are taking the points from Monza. Some of the highlights of the race, it was a safety car start and when we got underway it was Andrea Amici who led but there was drama early on for Alberto Viberti who slowed, he pitted and he lost a lap. Mikhail Spiroronov lost everything going into Cops Corner and Spiroronov was in the gravel, so too at Stowe, Cedric Lima. Gerhard Travalza was busy trying to work his way up the order. He muscled his way up the inside of Giovanni Venturini, forced him out wide and picked up the place as he came toward Wicker Corner. Amici was leading and pulling away on the first stint. The pit stops unwound and after them it was Andrea Palma who led, but he was deemed to have been half a second short on his pit stop. And so Palma was given a stop-go penalty for that half a second to make it up. It meant that after the pit stops, it was a battle between Piscopo and Mull. And when Eduardo Piscopo spun, your own Mull came through to score the victory. Race two is at Silverstone tomorrow. Join us for that from Jack Nichols and David Addison for now. Goodbye.